is just one of the farm machines on display at the Agriculture on The Columbus Fair, I feel, is one of the greatest fairs, not just because it's the largest fair, but because of Governor Rhodes and how he feels about the youth. He gives us more attention than he does anybody else, and it's really great. Mallory? I think the High State Fair is one of the best fairs around, and it's one of the largest, and it's also one of the best. The people here are really friendly, and everyone's really great. One thing I like about the hat you got on, Tubby. Yeah, it covers up half your ugly face. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Columbus is a great growing town. It's been five years since I've been back here, but now you can walk on heaven in Columbus. I mean, it is the town of towns, the place to be, and booming for business. There are more millionaires in Columbus than any other spot on earth. What attracts them to Columbus? The people. Look at all these beautiful people out here. Drum, 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 cause I feel a song coming on. Cause I feel a song coming. day I came to work, I was working in the phone room, and a man stood out there in the middle of the floor with a glass and, like, took it across his throat. I mean, cut his own throat. So it's pretty wild in here. You know, you see everybody come through this station. You know, uh, if you got money, I'd fly. I'm homeboy from Columbus. I was born and raised here. And this is where I am. Let me speak. Am I happy? Ain't that a bitch? Dude! Hell no, I ain't happy at all. How come? Because everything is in disorder. Ain't that something? Disorder, disorder, disorder. Like what? We thinking about bringing up big buildings, bringing down these buildings and bringing them up. What can you think about that? Ain't that something? That's something else. We thinking about, thinking about life. We ain't thinking about big buildings. First of all, Columbus is probably, or I should say Ohio, is perhaps a mother of fast food. A proper hamburger with a good balance of beef, bun, and even with the pickle and onions, you have vegetables. And I say a proper balance because if you get too much bread, it becomes out of balance. But if you have the right ratio, it does a pretty good job of satisfying the basic dietary needs of the human body. Say cheese. Cheese! Thank <laughs> you.
As far as people that are brought in that are, are actually salvageable, uh, number of gunshot wounds to the thorax and abdomen, knife wounds to the same. Well, we talk about, we speak about the Columbus Knife and Gun Club and their weekend meetings. Uh, and, uh, I, I suppose you develop a certain amount of cynicism, uh, you know, but you sort of have to develop that to survive. Turn down all these buildings like H.L. Green's gone, Rite Aid is gone, the Union's gone, the Neil House is gone. Before long, downtown will be nothing but parking lots. Any visitors come in from out of town, visit Columbus, they'll say, what is this? A city or a parking lot town? I think Columbus is one of the greatest cities in the country and they're just making a morgue out of it if they turn the buildings down. After six o'clock, you can throw a bowling ball downtown and don't hit anything. People like to teasingly remark that we have, because of our uh, ability to uh, bulldoze a lot of downtown buildings and, and uh, uh, be involved in, in, in raising uh, these great towers to the sky, that we have a little bit of an edifice complex. But I think that um, uh, a city's values are, are really the, the sum of its people's values. I used to rather box and eat, you know. I'm sitting. And I love the work. You understand me work. 
I'm a working fool. Well-known plumber. The toughest guy ever put my life was Cannonball Joe Tracy. He had 27 straight knockouts in his credit. Uh, in the sixth round, he knocked me down 14 times. No one knows cut my eyes, but I knocked him out in the sixth round. very close and one, one thing you'll find out that, that even boys and girls who marry non-greeks yeah, they, they come to our church they get married in our church if the girl is not greek and a boy is they'll get married in our church and they'll come they'll become good members of our church but our funerals and our uh, and our weddings and our baptisms are big events big events sad and glad the Greeks are bigger than Americans. Huh? In what way? In population. In population? No, Greece is much smaller. Let's do a Greek dance. Say it. Say it. Okay. I'm going to go to the house. 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 China? Yes. And I don't know what it's called anymore. And I don't know how to. Back it down, but it, it would okay. include all these markings here. 
see, for all ceramic wares. Let's look over and reference. I was doing some research for friends on Copeland, China. We just returned from London with a bust female thing that was late Copeland. And they wanted to check the markings on the back. And I was trying to find some books here on that. group is a system-wide thing for us so any the money will eventually go back to each one of our branches so like Morse Road uh, Northern Lights uh, Beach Wall it, it, some of it will funnel back to each one of those branches farm science review here at Don Scott farms our field is a farm operation and the largest farm show in uh, the state of Ohio, uh, even bigger than the Ohio State Fair. Uh, I hope the governor don't hear that, but uh, this is uh, the way it is, and it is sponsored and helped by the Ohio State University. Well, the farmer has today, as always, kind of behind the eight ball. Uh, farmers operate in a lot of cases on borrowed money, the interest is high, and uh, they are having a hardship now. For instance, corn is uh, just a little over two dollars a hundred, and there is no way that with high-priced land, the high-priced machinery, high-priced labor, and high-priced interest can they grow corn for this price. Can't cut it, make, make a straight cut. No, you can't make a straight cut. Because one, one side of the chain is more aggressive, but it dulls faster, and the other side is right. Many people have a lot of fun, make a little money, spend a little money. It's uh, very interesting. It's a good hobby, especially on a sunny day. You know?
need better coaching, for one thing. The past, some of the play calling in the game is just, I don't know where he's getting it from. So, I don't know, he's got to get on the players more. They got to want to win it. To come back and lose by three points to Stanford, I can understand, but 17 to the Florida State team, something's wrong. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. of the Congress who are here, and another governor, I hope. But this is a bipartisan meeting, so I'm not going to tell you how proud I am of Congressman Bud Brown and what And that goes for Paul Pfeiffer, too. You already know he'd make a great senator. Uh, and of course, your own Congressman from this district, Chalmers Wiley. I don't have to tell you about him, you know. This is my country, land of my birth. This is my country, grandest on earth. I pledge thee my America. Well, following the president, as those of us who are assigned to watch him in the White House do, is a full-time job. We go wherever he goes. Presidents and candidates come to Ohio frequently because Ohio is one of the ten largest states in terms of electoral votes in a presidential year, obviously one of the largest states in population, therefore has more congressional seats at stake and so forth. And because this year the economy is the main issue, in the midterm 84 elections, Ohio is again very important. And he always says something which uh, makes news. And our job. I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't do a good job. And I want everyone to know that the excitement of the weekend helps you appreciate what a great city Columbus, Ohio is. And Columbus, Ohio sits right next to Columbus, Georgia, in my heart. And I just want to say, Columbus, Ohio, I love you.
the new Miss Columbus USA 1982. Carrie Schilling, Miss Columbus, Texas. This is truly one world, ever shrinking, ever more populated by people who are not lucky enough to live in Columbus. We are the chosen few who can live in Columbus, and we must point the way for the rest of the world to live in harmony. And then, as you all know, the most remarkable man served as governor for 16 years. And I question that any governor in any state in our country has ever had that in many years of great service. Let me, let me say, at my age, the second thing to go is eyesight. <laughs> event. The third annual Columbus Banquet Marathon, in my opinion, is one of the real things that makes Columbus great. is so powerful and they control the print media television media uh, well I don't have the money to buy a newspaper and neither does 99.9% uh, .9 of all the people in this town we don't we can't go out and buy a newspaper we can't buy a television station um, we can't we don't have that kind of power people don't you're watching seven men literally make a life and death decision I'm John Damschroeder. We'll have that story tonight on Eyewitness News. It's, it gets pretty hectic, as today I was out on a shoot all afternoon and uh, come back at 3 o'clock and put together a half an hour show. They passed an amendment that slams the door on any further catastrophic illnesses coming before the state, pending legislative action. So I think it's worth leading the second block of the story. Certainly. 
so it runs, yeah. and then you will, uh, will you still be able to use the tees. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. We could use that in the pre-open or in the, in the sectional tees. Board uh, is going far afield uh, and is asking for. Seven, six, five. Also tonight, the story of another tug at the heartstrings for the state to loosen up the purse strings. But, and this is the most important action taken today, Bob, the controlling board barred any more aid for catastrophic illnesses pending action by the entire General Assembly. They're trying to find too quickly. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. Well, Ohio State University okay. also tonight in a big battle for big dollars is in court today. Trying to Coming out on three. Ready on the mic, seven. He has no more time for that. Mediator Sam Reject Cable. nine. Open mic, seven. Ready three. Blackout. Take three. Now Next on six. Ready four. Four. Lou and Monitor. Ready four. Four, Lou and Monitor. Quickly. Ready four. Okay. Okay. We've all been looking for some good economic news when it comes to four. Open mic, one. Nine. Four. Zoom out to a two shot. Thank you. Four. Ready. Zoom. David Monitor. Four. Zoom. Ready. Key, Kyron. Key, ready, roll, nine, slide, ready, take nine and draw. The clip, this clip is uh, in the cockpit, you know when, on the, uh, when they, no, this is before they take off, it's um, when they introduce the two crew members. The first thing you do when you when you get in, I, I guess it begins when you get up by listening to the newscasts and uh, trying to catch a, a fair measure of what all the TV and, uh, and radio stations have on the air in the morning <clears throat> in an effort to make sure that what we give them in the evening is, is fresh and not a rehash of what uh, has been heard that morning. I don't think you measure newspaper on a, a one-shot kind of basis. I, I think it is in continuity and in providing a, a newspaper every day that, that the reader can uh, identify with, know where we're coming from, uh, know fairly confidently that they will get an unfiltered blotter image back of, of what Columbus was that day or, uh, or the, uh, that afternoon. Uh, apparently, it's uh, a good yeah. picture from uh, that type of situation. Yeah, it's good. I think it's nice, nice on his clothes and uh, got the two principals and kept the other people discreetly in the back. Uh, CD. Kind of one. Sir. Sure. I think the media in Columbus uh, and probably any place else is not a monolithic thing. Uh, our newspaper is a great deal different from the afternoon newspaper uh, in perspective, in content, and in, in thrust. Uh, I'm not able to talk knowledgeably, knowledgeably about the different roles of the different television stations, but it's obvious that uh, WSU TV is a far cry from Channel 6, say. Here's what I want you to do. Check with the fire department and see if they took any pictures during the heat of that fire last night. Uh, I want you and Amos to go down to shoot some pictures of the remains of that house. It is a complete burnout. Columbus is a town that has not really grown in uh, its responsibility to provide an opportunity for black people. Uh, this is the only city of any significance in the state of Ohio where there is not yet a black sitting on a decision, a decision making posture on the board of a corporate entity for profit.
Have a good day. We'll see you. cities in the northern uh, part of the United States these days. The Chamber of Commerce is just beginning a national program where we're asking many uh, local businesses to utilize a part of their advertising budget to spread the good word that uh, Columbus is making it great, but more specifically that we are indeed a uh, high-tech information processing service center. Always surprises me is we're looking for information uh, the first thought is, well, we'll call New York. Uh, and we've had two projects we've done where we've looked all over the country and they recommend we end up going with Battelle because they've got all the talent right here. characterized by information processing in, in, in the biggest way. Uh, we have chemical abstracts in this city. Uh, if there's a scientific journal published in the industrialized world, it's, uh, it's translated and codified and computerized and made available to the whole world by uh, chemical abstracts. The information available in chemical abstracts is also available online in the service CS Online. By that service, a scientist uh, around, anywhere around the world can access the CAS database in order to find information on uh, chemical substances of interest. us realize that uh, we already are members of the global community. We trade with foreign countries. We have thousands of foreign students coming to Ohio to get their education. We have a lot of businessmen going overseas. America earns more than 40% of its revenues from uh, third world countries. Therefore, we have to learn to live within uh, the framework of peace uh, uh, and uh, uh, use the United Nations as an international uh, body for uh, mediation and for uh, uh, progress and for peace for all mankind. Uh, I'd like to say uh, Columbus is a very pretty city. Columbus Rama Shepard and Detail. Start to pass through, tanked and lined, till each turn back to swing. 
Action 6 News Update with Tom Ryan. Let's turn now to Bruce Kirk live on the scene. Bruce? Okay, John, thank you very much. It is Democratic pandemonium down here right now. As you can hear, Democratic pandemonium. Dick Celestius came out and said, what a difference four years makes. Let's go up top to the podium right now to hear what the next governor of Ohio has to say. Let's go to Dick Celeste. Dorothy's, Dorothy's husband, Merle, and the Dorothy and their family, another tremendous family in Ohio. Our victory, unfortunately, was not of votes, but it was clearly of friendship, of commitment, and of conviction. Thank all of you. to X Columbus area. Weather mostly cloudy and cold today. Scattered snow flurry around. Today's high about 35. Partial clearing and cold tonight with a low near 25. And in the city now it's 32. With a new one from Hall & Oates. This is Maneater from H2O on 92X FM. Boy, I wish you'd have been up here earlier. I was real exciting then. <laughs> Ruthie, what have I got as we pour a double? What do we got? Francis. Connie Francis, baby, that's a keeper. What's number two? The Letterman. And the Letterman. We put them together. Here's what we got on a gray afternoon. And look at the snow flurries outside. Oh, my God. Look, it's starting to snow flurry. We played a song on COL. Evening show. Oh, my God. There's your snow, boys. Ain't that, boy, isn't that a good-looking T-shirt? I'm going to show you something. <laughs> Ain't that gorgeous? About as exciting as a fly going up a drape, ain't it? <laughs> it's called the Liberation Dance, music from Dollar Brand on Ohio's only 24-hour jazz radio station. You're listening to Jazz 104, WBBY in Westerville.
No winner has been declared yet in the photo finish gubernatorial race in Illinois. Reporter Bob Springer has an update. Illinois is impounding all the ballots from Tuesday's election. See how easy it is? The winner still unknown in the photo finish race for governor. And I have been coming to the Tweak Bazaar and have worked at it ever since it started, 50 odd years ago. I was in, when we started, we started in someone's home. Um, and had about, we made $150 the first year. He's real tired of dialysis. He has a great big needle that we have to put into his leg every time he comes in here. And it is, it's hard for adult males to tolerate that, much less little boys, you know. It's really hard for him to put up with a great big needle. He's like, he does a good job. When he's on dialysis, he reads books. He watches Sesame Street. We use library books like crazy. And these are all library books. The library comes here once a week and gives us 10 books and we exchange them. And every week we have new books.
sports, I, I don't think I would say that they're important here. I think I'd say they're a religion here. Um, and I, I think that um, there is life after OSU football. Because it's not fair. It's just not fair. You gotta play so it's even games. Even. That's all. Because if it is, Ohio State's in the Rose Bowl. That's all you gotta look at. Go Hawks! Go! Go Hawks! 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 get a movement going, though, to name the stadium the Woody Hayes Stadium at Ohio State University. Right. Well, he's the finest coach we ever had. We love Woody. We think Woody was great, despite all of the problems he might have had. At the end. At the end, yeah. I don't know, but I get sucked around when I go downtown. <laughs> In what way? They push me out of their way, and of course, I always say, I know you hate your mother. But do you have to take it out on every white-haired person? And we have a lot of elderly men that's in self-pity and everything, and uh, I try to get them out to try to get them to come to the center, uh, you know, like I did, because I had to be told about this place. I thought everybody was in a wheelchair and everything here <laughs> until I came here. Well, I think, we think they just fit out us. For the most part, we're talking about a small group of people in this community that make major decisions about uh, how the um, how the city will run. For example, uh, the the uh, the interests of the Wolves is a good example because they have been here a long time and have considerable vested interest in the community. Uh, the television station, the radio station, uh, the newspaper, uh, the dispatch in particular. Now. I would not say that the wolves control the community, but I would say there is an elite that does. Good afternoon. I'd like to welcome all of you to the Port Columbus Airport dedication of the Cornerstone. At this time, I'd like to introduce Bishop Herman, who will give the invocation. May this new airport always be used for your honor and glory and for the good of the people of this community. Norman Fulp, I haven't seen Norman. Yes, he's here. Uh, Harry Franken. Uh, Robert Potts. Bob Potts, I think I'm not pretty sure he's here. And of course, William C. Wolfe, Jr. The completion of this new Port Columbus International Airport facility really marks the entry of Ohio's capital city among the great cities of our nation. It symbolizes the fact that this is the window to the outside world and sets an example of the great city that it is. The largest city in the world named after Christopher Columbus. Ralph Waldo Emerson said that an institution is but the length and shadow of one man. Ralph Waldo Emerson has always been my hero, but he was wrong when he said that because if this institution is the length and shadow of a man, it is the length and shadow of at least two men, one named Wolf and one named Casto.
think it's our humanity uh, and the humanity of other people that we need to be preserving, that we need to be recording, uh, even, in its, even in its smallest moments. Um, first communions or falling out of love or whatever it might be, these, these are the things which, which, uh, which I think really need to be mirrored about a society all of those small moments because although we cannot see it now and, and, and it looks as though so, as so much ephemera to us and uh, um, I think that in the end when we look at it collectively it is going to weigh as heavy as all of the great pronouncements by all of the people that we think of as newsmakers in this town so we should look at uh, we should look at these people Columbus is the only city that has TV surveillance with a traffic control system. There are several other cities that have TV surveillance on freeway systems, but not with signal systems. If the freeway starts to back up, we can change that signal timing, give more time to the freeway ramp, and clear up the congestion. But that ramp used to back up all the way onto the freeway in regular intervals. Being so, the court does not take it lightly when uh, 
any body strikes a uh, police officer when the officer is attempting to, to do their duty. However, this officer uh, has interceded uh, on your behalf that you not be put in jail. I think you owe him a debt of gratitude for that. person, he loses 20 points. Okay, now 135. That's all you need. You're done. This is the area where all autopsies are performed, uh, except extremely decomposed bodies, which are in a room across the hall. This is the cooler where bodies are kept for short-term storage in between autopsies, and when they are finished with the autopsy and ready to be released. From the Egyptian Book of the Dead, which was placed with the bodies to give them directions on what to do after they passed into the underworld. And one of the interesting things is the juxtaposition with the scales because um, one of the things they had to do in order to pass into the eternal reward was have their hearts weighed. So it's kind of interesting that they put it with the scales. There's no difference between inside and outside except these people can't do what they want to outside. We tell them when to go to lunch, uh, dinner, and uh, breakfast, and tell them what time to turn the lights out. You look in the background on one of them, there's always something in the background on a man which creates this problem, either gambling, women, or narcotics, or drinking. These are weapons that's been found throughout different shakedowns throughout the institution. And you got one correction officer supervising anywhere from 50 to 75 inmates to possibly 100 in the stresses there. You never know what a person is going to do or what a group of people is going to do. And used to be old Death Row, which at one time housed John Dillinger's gang, Pierpont and Mackey at one time. Well, the largest one we ever had was 16 in 1949, ever electrocuted in one given year. Just think, yeah, that's 530. They've been executed here. I've seen lots of them come and go, and it's always good in some inmate that's in here. If you have time, bring it out on him. We've seen the bad part of him. I'm bringing the good part out. And that's up to prison reform to do it. sell you some transportation. Do you need a nice car today? We'll fix you right up. Take a look here. We've got some beautiful cars. Here's a nice Eldorado right here. I've been living here in this neighborhood about uh, 17 years, and uh, by having a business night here too, I mean, I really enjoy it, and I come and know the people, and 
We just like a big, large family. That's plenty of rusty. Look at that. Yeah. And the lug wrench should just tear that right. cap up, and then you can't. Then you can't. Then you can't stuck on the road with right. a flat tire. Well, I tell you, it took me it took me three hours to get that one back off back here, and I had to cut that off. <laughs> it took three hours. It's very very interesting. People from all walks of life. Uh, recently, mostly people that are broke. Um, a lot of the people in this area are on unemployment, uh, welfare assistance of some type, and they're just learning to live with less money. I don't, there is a, re the recession is on, and it's, the south end has really hit hard, but uh, they're not used to working and getting a paycheck every week. They're getting an unemployment check every two weeks, or a welfare check, or a aid to dependent children check. This is a working class neighborhood. Right now, nobody's working, but it's basically a working class neighborhood. We're talking about one person in ten uh, being on our food stamp rolls. Okay, so that's very important. These people are uh, definitely in need of assistance. Um, I visited their homes. I, uh, I know that they do not have uh, Cadillacs hidden in their garages. Because we are raised in that work ethic where um, a person's value is directly uh, attached to their productivity. And if someone is not working, they're not very productive, and so they uh, do not appear to be very valuable. Uh, I think that most people should be educated to the fact that government has taken such a big bite out of our paychecks, when, and, and such a, uh, a large percentage of, of money from, in form of taxes from people when they were working, that the, the government has a responsibility to, to help these people out now that they're on hard times. They need a break. Nine, eight, plus four, five, six, plus nine, eight, minus six, five, minus six, three, plus equals five, point, five, five. Okay, this is a talking computer terminal and we're linked to the computer system from the State Department of Education. Which of the symbols is used for addition? Plus. Good. Which symbol is used for subtraction? Right. Which symbol is used for division? Star. Try again. Which symbol is used for division? Slash. Good for you.
because I think if you think about composition. And that's the Channel 4 logo done with all the faces that face away from me turned off as it would normally be displayed. This is three, man. <laughs> Yeah, that's what our competitors are saying right there. Adunoi, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Natan Lanu Torah Emet, Vichaye Olam Netabitochenu, Baruch Ata Adunai, Notein HaTorah. Amen. Jeff, on behalf of our congregation, I'm very proud to present to you a copy of the Siddur that you have used and shown that you can use very well. And I hope you use it over and over again in our congregation and other congregations that you go to all over the country, perhaps all over the world, for many, many years to come. And on behalf of our congregation, I'm also very privileged to present you with a certificate that marks your being called to the bima of our congregation on this Shabbat of Chanukah, this Shabbat of Parshat Miketz, as a bar mitzvah. The image that is presented of this city uh, is one that does not portray what is really beneath the, the surface. Uh, speaking from the art point of view, 
uh, and looking at the different cultures that are here, what you find is that a number of different cultures have their own ceremonies, uh, their own holidays, uh, celebrations. He's gonna blow us up, bye. The people who are relying strictly on, on you know, what they get from the newspapers, the radio, etc., quite often will get a, a misperception of what is in reality going on. Uh, I'm sure that there are a number of people uh, who live here in the city who are unaware of the large Native American Indian population that we have here, uh, is unaware of the, the Cambodians that are here in the city, uh, the Vietnamese that are here, etc. I think it's a real crime. I think that's one of the reasons why Indians now have such a struggle, um, is because they are forgotten about. Even Indians have forgotten about themselves. They've forgotten their own culture, their own languages, um, and they're, they're very um, important. Um, they're, they're unique and they're, they're interesting and they're valuable, and they're not something that should be lost. Um, and I think that, I mean, there's a lot of people who, who don't even think Indians still exist. Indian people aren't materialistic. Um, they're not power hungry. Um, and I think those are, those are two very prominent um, I'm sure people wouldn't admit, but those are two very, you know, those are two very, very p things that you see most in the society is people want power, they want money, and they want a lot of material things around them. of the day that we uh, legally lost Vietnam for the communist regime. I think as a community or as a community of refugees, oftentimes we are uh, looked upon as a threat because of the very sad memories that we all have about the Vietnam War. But basically we're very fun-loving people and uh, though we're very shy because traditionally uh, we have to keep a certain status. Uh, we're very shy, but once you get to know a Vietnamese, it's for life. And the friendship develops slowly, but it stays for life. Before, when I traveled all over the United States, every city and every state in the Union, and they would try to sell me. Like in California, at those big meetings, they'd have some quartet or glee club would get up and sing, California, here I come, trying to sell me on California. In Florida, it would be moon over Miami. And in, um, in uh, Kentucky, it would be my old Kentucky home. And when they get all through with their orations and everything. I just told them when the burdens of life I'm called to lay down, 
I hope I may die in Columbus. I can't think of a more glorious crown than one of the side of Columbus. And when the last trump wakes the land and the sea and the tomb of the earth and all your prisoners free, you all may go aloft, you choose, but for me, I'm going to just stay in Columbus. <laughs> and that shuts them up.